guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. My name is Miley. If you are new here, I do a new DIY video every single week. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, you know what to do with that information. Why have I decided this, this is the thing to do? Don't know. So this week I have a really fun, but also super random DIY planned out. So this DIY is actually a commissioned piece. I had a friend reach out to me that had a bit of a design dilemma. I don't even know if that's what I wanna call it. In her little son's room, it looks like there's a built-in desk and her son is, I think one, so he does not need a desk. So she wanted me to design something out to fill in the space where a chair would go. And after talking with her and tossing out some ideas, I tossed out the idea to do a double-sided sensory board. And if you're like me, and you're not a kid, and you don't have a kid, but you act like a kid, you might not know what a sensory board is. I don't even know why I know what a sensory board is. There are all different kinds of sensory boards. There's ones that have like all different fabrics on them, fuzzy fabric, sparkly fabric. And then there are sensory boards that are more like the one I have designed out where there's different doors with latches on them, switches, zippers, to basically teach kids dexterity, colors, numbers, all different kinds of things. So I've been designing this board out for a few weeks and I'm I'm so excited to finally get started on this project. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, the first thing I needed to do for this project was get everything cut out. And that is probably obvious. But you know what, I'm here to just state the obvious and maybe add a funny story or opinion here and there. Oh, <clears throat> my voice is just cracking. Allergies, they're real. Oh. Okay, so the dimensions I had to cut this to was of course to fit inside that nook. I guess if this ended up not fitting inside the nook, this project would end up being pretty pointless. Oh, I am sorry guys, I'm gonna fight through all of the junk that is in my throat. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> so I know I already said this in the intro, but I was super excited for this project. I love projects where I get to combine two things I love to do. So on one hand, I get to use my power tools and build this thing. And then on the other hand, I get to sit down and paint and decorate this thing. And since it's a kid's toy, I got to make it super fun and colorful. Also, because this is a kid's toy, I really took my time sanding everything really well so that there was no chance chance of getting any like splinters or slivers or whatever you call them. And next up on the cut list was cutting all of the pieces for one of the activities on the board. So on one of the sides, I wanted to make four small little doors that had all different kinds of latches on them. So to make these doors, I cut four pieces that were eight inches long and two pieces that were two inches long. And anytime there was a knot in the wood, I cut that off before cutting the next piece because I wanted to make sure these doors had no imperfections on them. And of course, after sanding down all of those pieces I just cut, I got to work on the very, very, very long journey of getting everything primed. And when I started on the priming process, I didn't really realize everything I had to prime and paint. And of course you have to do two, sometimes three coats, which adds even more time, making this a super long process. And I started this long process by priming all of the large pieces outside before moving inside to prime all the small pieces. And I switched to gesso, which is basically the same if not the exact same thing as primer. And inside, I started priming all the door pieces first. And once the first two layers of gesso were dry, I then had to flip the doors over and prime the other side because people don't like it when you don't paint the inside of a door. And after the doors, I primed all the other little components I wanted to add to the sensory board. Also, this is random, but I recently heard a sensory board get called a busy board or a Montessori board. I didn't really realize there were so many different names to a board with latches and doorbells on it. <laughs> 
<laughs> and after hours of priming, I could finally start on some color. So for the main box, I decided to keep it neutral. I did have this original paint design that was much more busy and had patterns everywhere, but I ended up talking to my sister who happens to have a degree in childhood development and she told me that babies and toddlers actually do better with more simple patterns. So that really changed the direction I was originally planning on taking this. So I switched the box to be plain gray so that the colorful components would pop more. Then I moved on to the doors and for the doors I also realized after talking to my sister I had to simplify the door design. I originally had more multicolored doors designed out but my sister told me making the design monochromatic would be better so that you could use the doors as a teaching element. For example, what's behind the purple door? It's a lobster or something like that. But if something's multicolored, you can't play that game. So for the design of this door, I made the outside of the door a pastel version of whatever color I chose. And then the inside of the door is the non-pastel version. And I still wanted to do a fun pattern on each door. So using shapes from this shape slash number toy I got to put on the board, I traced the shape onto each door. And I tried to correspond the same color and shapes as the toy. And then like priming, I had to paint everything else. A yellow light switch cover, a pink light switch cover that switched to blue, wooden letters for the little one's name, and then these wooden balls because I made this little slidey contraption thing on the board. And after hours upon hours of priming and painting, it was time to put the first side all together. completes the first side of the board, but I did say this was double-sided. But luckily the other side, I kept it really simple, making a magnet board. I got this super thin sheet of stainless steel, cleaned it off, and spray painted it white. And then taking those dowels that I primed during my priming montage, I painted those black. After everything dried, I drilled one hole into each corner of the stainless steel so that I could attach it to the other 28 by 29 inch piece of plywood that I cut. And then taking those dowels, I made a frame around the piece of stainless steel, mainly because I don't want any little baby fingers getting cut by the edge of a piece of stainless steel. And two, this just made it look nicer. And to attach the dowels to the plywood, I used some flat L-shaped brackets that I think gave this side a fun industrial look. And then it was time to put this whole thing together. So using my Craig jig, I measured the thickness of the wood, which was half an inch, set everything to be half an inch, and made four pocket hole screws on each end of the 27 by 8 inch pieces that I cut earlier. And then to attach one of the front big pieces, I did three pocket holes going in the same direction on each one of the frame pieces. And I probably should have made these pocket holes before I put the whole frame together, but Oh well. And then using those 12 pocket holes, I was able to attach the side with all the doors and switches on it from the back so that no screws were showing. 
And before closing up this whole box, I attached a handle to the top so that the box was nice and easy to pick up and move around. I wanted to make this box so that you could easily access the inside of the box in case anything ever came loose or something happened. So using four of these L-shaped brackets, I used those to attach the final side to the box. So if my friend ever needed to get to the inside, it would only be four screws to unscrew to get inside. And after doing a few touch-ups with some paint, there was just one last thing I needed to do for this board. So originally I was going to paint an animal behind each door. Obviously, if I paint a picture right on the box, it can't be changed. And after thinking it through a little bit, I thought it would be more fun to be able to switch what's behind each door. So you could open the door and it could be an armadillo or an ant. Ew, ew, let's not do bugs. Or a cute little panda. Yeah, pandas are cute. So I printed out four pictures of farm animals and four pictures of safari animals. And using some self-adhesive laminate paper, I laminated each picture. And I made them all the same size and using some picture corners, I attached each picture. So that each picture could be easily switched out or switched around. And that way my friend can put whatever she wants behind each door. Even though I really wanted to paint four pictures, I think this just makes it a bit more fun and kind of like a choose your own adventure. And that is it guys. This completes the double-sided sensory board, busy board, Montessori board, whatever you want to call it. It ended up being a much simpler design, but I still really like it and I designed it to keep the child in mind instead of doing whatever I wanted to do, which is probably a good thing. If you liked this video, well, you can just read the board to know your next steps. And I will see you guys next week. Bye guys!